of a nation. Hebrew Kingdom Builder. See, a sound is important. Because the sound will tell you a lot about what's going on. It's not so much just to hear, but to listen also. Say, for example, some of the time we may cry out to the Most High. They say, Most High, yeah, please come and help me. Please, please, please. I need help. I need sisters. Come and help me. Come and help me. Most of you just sit there. You may wonder, man, why, why is the most of just sitting there? I'm crying out to him. But the most of is listening to the sound of your cry. Somebody will catch what I'm saying. See, I can tell from the room if my son is really hurt by the sound of his cry. A mother is real good at this. They can tell, based off my wife used to do this, I really could not figure this out. She used to listen to our children crying. She's like, oh, he's not going to be changed. Oh, no, nah, he, he, he's hungry. That's, that's what that cry about. Because he's listening for the sign. Say the sign. She's not just saying, oh, he's crying. And see, the reason why the most high don't come to some of our rescue is because he knows it's nothing serious. You just whining. Say you whining. Oh, boy. Yes, the most high know. You know. And see, my son can be in the other one. Now, my wife is with him. What's wrong with him? I said, don't worry. They are, they do. You know, because sometimes they just cry out just to see a mom who come in. Now, when dad home, you know, for some miracle reason, they just don't cry. Right? Now, my son's not allowed to cry. I ain't that time. They didn't cry. But you just can't be crying over anything. Now, my baby, she, she can cry over she won't cry. That's what they right? But my young kids, they know, you know, you just can't be crying over everything. You know what I'm saying? You are going to be a young man. You feel the need to cry over emotion. Okay, I understand that. We can talk about it. But based off their cry, I can tell if it's something serious or if it's not. So if they're in the next room whining, I'm not going to see what it's about. But if I hear a cry from their belly, I know there's something urgent and I can get it there quickly. It's the same thing with the most high. Stop whining to them and cry out to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we are going to talk about the feast of the trumpets. Listen for the sounds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's build. Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10. Verses 1 through 10. Numbers chapter 10. Make sure you jump over to it. Don't just take my word for it. You go to the scripts. Make sure you know he's reading the right thing. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets. Say two trumpets. Two trumpets of silver of a whole piece thou shalt make them. That thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly in the journey of the camps. Now you have to understand, we talk about this last feast, the last feast days. We talk about the difference between the silver horn and the ram's horn, right? If you didn't get that message, you have it on our YouTube page, you have to check it out. And when they shall blow them, all of the assembly shall assemble themselves to be at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And then they blow up with one trumpet, say one trumpet. One trumpet. Then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. When he blow in alarm, say in alarm. And alarm. Then the kings that lie on the east parts shall go forth. When he blow in alarm, the second time, then the kids that lie on the south side shall take the journey. They shall blow in alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, he shall blow. But he shall not sound in alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance for Say forever. Forever. How long is forever? Forever. Forever. Say forever. 
Forever is forever. So what does that mean? That means this ordinance shall never depart from you. He didn't say Christmas is forever. He didn't say Easter is forever. He didn't, all talk. he didn't say Thanksgiving is for all. He didn't say none of those things are in there. But he said to do these things forever. See, one thing, the problem with people when it comes to the Bible is that they want to take words and use it for their own interpretation. See, when you talk to people, they know hell is going to be forever, but they don't know the feast days are forever. They know that the most I sit on the throne forever. They know what forever means right here. But they don't know what forever means right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when the congregation is to be gathered, verse 7, together he shall blow, but he shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, we just read that, hold on to verse 9. And if he go to wars, they go to war. war. In your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before Yahuwah your Elohim, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Verse 10. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace and offerings that ye may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. See, today we are going to talk about the different things the trumpets are going for. Because according to the sounds, it's uh, sound. determined how Israel reacted to the blowing of the horn. And we, in these last days, have to pay attention not just to the or the, 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 you know, the sound, just one sound of the trumpet or the shofar, we have to make sure we are listening to what the Most High is saying within that shout of the shofar. Hallelujah. Yeah. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 2. And we're going to jump down to verse 24 through 25. And Yahweh will speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Speak, verse 24, to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, he shall have a Sabbath. Say a Sabbath. Sabbath. That's why we call this a high Sabbath. Right? Even though tomorrow is also a Sabbath, this day is also considered a high Sabbath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. He shall do no several work therein, but he shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahoo. So we ask him. The last part. He shall offer an offering made by fire unto you. How can we do that today? Romans 12, is it? Romans 12. Offer your bodies up as a living sacrifice. What? Holy and acceptable unto Yah. Where's the body? The Ruach. God. Let them burn it up. Burn up every last thing that's no good. See, it's a purifies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So another lesson. Let's go. Number chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, he shall have a holy convocation. He shall do no several work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mouth. Let all the inhabitants of the land trip, for the day of Yahuwah coming. Mm. For it is nigh at hand. 
a day of darkness and of gloomness. Oh man, they told us it was going to be a holy good day. Right? Y'all remember the white pictures with the little chubby white angels and you know the white Jesus was smiling with the long silky hair. Y'all remember the pictures? Yep. That's what the Bible said. Bible says it's going to be gloom. It's going to be dark. Folks going to be dying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A day of darkness and gloom is a day of clouds and a thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people in the storm. There have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after, even to the years of many generations. Listen to the sound of this, right? Let's get into it. Blowing the chauffeur. Blowing the chauffeur. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have to sit up here and act like I know I'm a little chauffeur. I'm still practicing. Y'all pray for me, right? Now, 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 my daughter, my daughter can like this whole thing. Now. You know, I, did, I was asking the most time, why is it that you get my daughter? The strength and I can't always attune to nothing at all. Sound like an elephant down. Right? So that's why you need some more way for all the show. Because I don't want to disrupt the service. You know what I'm saying? Now they're looking around like, what is dying? Man? Yeah, something to say. Blowing the show for. So, blowing the show for is a major part of culture in Israel's history. Bro, now understand, blow the chauffeur, this is not the only day that you supposed to blow the chauffeur. You blow throughout the days. Guess what? You blow when it's time for the war, but you don't see. You blow it on different occasions. It's not just set for this day. As y'all know, anytime service is on Shabbat, we go outside and we blow the chauffeurs, and we come in here and blow the chauffeurs. Why? Because it's giving Israel a signal to Gather, say gather. Gather. I'm kind of getting ahead. Let me slow down. All right. It is a memorial day on the seventh month of the Hebrew year. Now, for those that are not familiar with the Hebrew calendar, let me just give a brief synopsis. You know, just in case our visitors may not know. I know most of us know. But remember, the most high only looks really at four months throughout the year. Right? A bit, the first year. No, we don't say Nisan. That's Babylon, right? It's a bit. Nisan is taken from Babylon, they adopted. But it's a bit. That's what the most I call them. Our new year don't start when everything is dead. Right? When something is new, when it's a new year, that means things come to life, things grow, things come out, things happen. None of that stuff happened in January 1st. It's cold. Hallelujah. I'm from New York. Now, I know January 1st, when that thing is called here. We call it Brick up, upstairs. We just want to call it Brick because it be so cold, but like Brick is hitting your face. Like, yeah. Your face is hurt going outside. You talk to people like this. Like, what? People think you mad? Like, what? <laughs> like, what are you looking at? Brick is cold. That's how cold it be. But our new year don't start. In January, I believe it starts in the spring. Say the spring. spring. Because the spring is when everything becomes new. The spring is when everything comes out. Butterflies come out. Butterflies come out. Birds fly back. So anyway, the spring, everything that was planted in the fall springs up. And it springs up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's a memorial day of the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew year. There are not only different sounds of the chauffeur, but there are different meanings also to the blowing of the chauffeur. Okay? It is important for Israel to have an ear to hear. Say, have an ear to hear. Have an ear to hear. Have an ear to hear when the sounds of the chauffeur are blown. Don't just look at these as, oh, those nice chauffeurs, those are nice. You know, oh, he got a, he got a, a, a short, or oh, he got a, a long. Don't just look at that because you have to pay attention to the sound. Say the sound. Sound. The prophetic voice 
a trumpet blow. The prophetic voice, a trumpet blow. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Let's look at some scriptures. Cry aloud, spare not. Say, spare not. Yeah. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgress in the house of Jacob their sins. The most I always equates many of our prophets, Yahushua, which we don't see, he equates their voice to a trumpet or a sound of a shofar. Why? Because through their voice, they're raining out judgment. Say judgment. Judgment. We see all throughout Ezekiel, all throughout Isaiah, all throughout Isaiah, or Jeremiah, Yahushua's ministry. They're crying out and they're staring out. Like a trumpet. Say like a trumpet. Like a trumpet. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 7. Again, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, listen to what he said. Son of me, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, that the people of the land take the land of their, of their coats and set them apart, set them for their watchmen. And when he see the sword come upon the land and he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the word, the sound of the trumpet, and take now understand. This is a watch man blowing the trumpet, right? Blowing the show of God, right? Why is your name think, oh, it's time to go get No, because they had to pay attention to the what? The sound. Because they said, oh, oh, that means trouble coming. Let's get up out of here, right? And whosoever hear the sound of the trumpet and take it not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that take it warning shall deliver his soul. But, say but. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow it, not the trumpet, doesn't speak up, doesn't speak out, doesn't say what does say Yahweh, and the people be not warned that the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore shalt thou hear the word of a word at my mouth and warn them for me. Listen for the sign. Revelation chapter 1 is Yahushua, verses 10 through 11. I was in the Ruach on Yahweh's day and heard behind me a great voice as a rock. As a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book and send unto the seven assemblies. Amos chapter 3, we're just going through this and we're going to get into it. We show the prophetic voice of trumpet book, right? Everybody see it. Amos chapter 3, verse 6 through 7. Shall the trumpet blow in the city? And the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city? And Yahuwah have not done it? Surely, Yahuwah Elohim will do nothing but he will reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So you see how throughout these verses it's time the sound of the horn to the voice of the prophets has been spoken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. I know y'all smell that for this morning. How's the time to rebuke you? Right? <laughs> yeah, this guy. The meanings of the trumpet is gone. So we're going to look at the meanings and we're going to get into a few of them. We're not going to go through all of them. And we're going to talk on a few of them, all right? One meaning was for the calling of the sinners, right? Another one was the journey of the kings. That was another reason why they blew the trumpets. One was for calling of the leaders. One was for alarms and warnings. Many times they put the trumpets for alarms and warnings. 
The other one was for war and enemy oppression. That's why it's important for us to put this show for in this week in America. Hallelujah. Oh, no, boy. This show for will help you more than the vote with. Hallelujah. Because if it's a rapture, you don't need for a second exit. 
Right? Yeah. So the trumpets were always used to gather Israel. Numbers chapter 10, verse 2. Maybe two trumpets. Say two trumpets. Now you gotta pay attention because sometimes they do two trumpets, sometimes they do one. Because they listen to the sound. Maybe two trumpets of silver in the neighborhood. We put over the silver and the rams on, right? Take maybe two trumpets of silver of a whole piece. Shall thou make them that thou mayest use them for the calling of the what? Assembly and for the journey of the kings. Isaiah chapter 7, 27, verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet, say the great trumpet, the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship Yahuwah in the holy mountain at Jerusalem. Hallelujah. We must follow the sound and the voice of Yah in these final days. He who has an ear. Hear what the same God. See, because you can hear God's voice, you have to be able to discern it too. Because it could be how Satan's voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It definitely could be. I don't care. I, 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 I can hear the most high. But it comes a time as you get to hear the most high, you've got to be able to discern it. He even told you, test all things. Prove all things to see this of God. Test every ruach, every spirit. Because you can't believe everything, right? Now remember the story of the old prophet and the young prophet, right? Just in case you don't let me tell it. Young prophet knows how to the world and say, yo, go into the city, tell, tell the king this and that, and get your mind back home, right? Young prophet goes in, does what he's supposed to do, get ready to go back home, and old prophet say, no prophet. Old prophet comes in and say, yo, listen, I hear from the most high too. If anybody ever come and say that to you, more than likely, they don't hear from the most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody that always, listen, let me not say anybody, okay? Most people that always say, before they say something, Yahoo told me this, thus say God, they probably hear from God. See, because they have to say that to try to validate what they're saying. See, if you speak from God, you don't even have to say God said God because they can hear God in your voice. Why? Because they're listening for the, the sounds. Oh, yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. They're listening for the sound. Nah, nah, that was something like that. Huh. You know, the, the prosperity piece. Most I said, go to the bank right now, right there at 7 at 8 o'clock, right now. And go get $10,000 out of the bank. The folks is crazy enough to run around, fall out. Oh! Okay, you are going to go to jail because the bank is closed. That don't sound like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must follow the sound and the voice of God in these final days. So he who has been, the beginning, we are saved. The calling of leaders. This is also when they blew the trumpet. There was also a sound they had to listen for to know that this sound was dedicated to the leaders, to the assembly, to this group, to that group. They had to listen for a sound. The sound of one, say one. One. One trumpet would also sound for leadership to set up. All leaders will gather at this. Sad. Numbers chapter 10, verse 4. And if they blow, but with one. one. See, the last one said two. If they blow with one trumpet, then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, so gather themselves unto the leaders of Israel. Leaders do not just consist of more Leaders of Israel, leaders of tribes, leaders of homes must all take their need to this sign. Men, you have to take heed to this sign in your home. You're a leader. 
You got to be able to hear the voice of the Most High. Anytime my children is out of power, all they should be evaluating me. Because, see, a strong man can't come in and spoil a strong man's goods unless he first find that strong man. So, my children constantly acting, you know, my kids, amen. So, yeah, no, I love my son Solomon, right? That's, that's my kid. I, I, but I gotta give Solomon a little extra attention, right? And it's a reason. Solomon busy. I don't call him bad. I don't call him just busy, right? And, you know, actually, I'm kind of reaping what I saw, right? Solomon makes me call my mother and apologize for her back. Right? So whenever I'm with Solomon, I Solomon got to stay right here, my right dad. Right? Solomon just, you know, he's busy, right? I love Solomon. Now see my oldest and my youngest, you know, they probably got to get a little bit, probably once a month, I'll say, right? Solomon probably twice a day, right? <laughs> Ain't that one. But it seems like, it, right? But I always reevaluate me. Whenever, you know, because Simon don't act at all. Because he know he get that work, right? You know, furniture move, you know, these two fives of throw, you know, you know, action will, you know, will get water. But when he goes to school, you know, he seems to forget who he got to own to. Right? But whenever he acts up in school, I always check me. And not all the time, but I'm going to tell you honestly. Seven times out of ten, my prayer life probably didn't it need to be. My reading the word, my spending time that week, I'm talking about that week, just been shouting, find myself too busy, and it was truly going down to my children. And I don't always get them. Almost, most of the time, get me. Because I'm checking myself as a leader. Say a leader. leader. And, and, and for the mothers who don't have a husband in the home, you are the leader of your home until your husband comes. Or if you desire to be there. But always check yourself whenever something is off balance in the home. See, the children can't walk straight and mom and daddy always argue. Ah. Oh, uh, applause. Applause. <laughs> it can't happen. You can't. The children are not going to respect your daddy if you cussing him out. And you shouldn't be cussing anyway. Oh, uh, that's all. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. You shouldn't be cussing anyway. Because you ain't going to cuss in the kingdom. All right, all right, let's go. So, leaders. Be leaders. Leaders, you have to listen for the sign. It's not just leaders of Israel. It's the leaders of the tribes and leaders of the home. But before we touch the home, the tribe of Israel, we got to check self. Say self. self. Make sure self is in right line with the most high. How we up? Now, now, let me say this since I said that about Solomon. I just, last night, my son Solomon prayed the house down. Hallelujah. I mean, we, we did it there. I was, you know, as we take turns leading in prayer every third hour. And, you know, I was just getting home and, man, Solomon went and was like, man, sure. He got going, he won't stop. See, I know, I, I always tell him, I don't care how crazy, I know. See, as a leader, it is also a leader. You have to speak into your children. That's right. You speak into them. You tell them what they were going to be. That's right. I'm here. I'm here. You rest in you rest in mind. You don't just let your children grow up and decide, but you speak into their life while they're young. You're going to be prophet of the most high. Right? You're going to be a doctor, right? You're going to be my, my, my daughter. My wife talking about being a midwife, right? See, we have to speak these things into them. And then once we speak them, we give them ways to act them out. 
So if my daughter wanted to be a midwife, my, my wife gets her little baby gals and lets her watch different videos and know that I don't mean she don't have no baby and no devil is alive. No, but he's teaching her at a young age. My son Solomon, he's good with his hands. I know he's going to do carpentry work. So guess what I do? Anytime I go to Home Depot, I'm taking with him. Right? Anytime I push him in that area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you are here to be a good steward of your children. You are here to guide them. They can't even match their goals correctly. Why are you going to let them decide what they want to be? You are the leader. You speak it into them. Father, say fathers. Father. Men, lay hands on your children. Speak into their life. Pray for them. Don't let them go to bed without praying. Because that's where spiritual warfare happens. Oh man, I gotta let me stay on the lesson. Hold on. Let's go. Sound in the alarms. There was a sound to alarm. Say alarm. Alarm the people and warn the people. So there was a certain sound that was given where Israel would hear it and they would know that's an alarm or a warning. Remember, we just read in Ezekiel about the watchman. When the watchman blows a horn, they knew what trouble was coming, right? Numbers chapter 10, verses 5 through 7. When you blow an alarm, and the, then the kids that lie on the east part shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, say the second time. So they also listen for the numbers of times. They listen for the sign. Then the kids that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound a what? An alarm. So you gotta think about it. Wait, they just said the sound of an alarm and blow the trumpets, but at the end they're saying blow the trumpets, but don't sound that long. Why? Because they're listening for a sound. A sound. Huh. A specific sound. Amos chapter 3, verses 6 through 7. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city? And Yahweh have not done it. Surely Yahweh Elohim will do nothing, but he will deliver the secret unto his servants, the prophets. Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound and what? And alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh coming, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and strong, there had not been the evil, there might neither shall there be any after it, even to the years of many generations. Blow the trumpets. Why? Because there's different sounds that you have to pay attention to. Then you also blow the, 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 the show for, for war and enemy oppression. Folks, I can wait to get hit, boy. Make sure you pay attention to other ones, too. Because uh. every time they blow the show for, it wasn't for this reason. See, once I come back to gather, you blow the show for, you get your guns ready because you think it's wartime. You end up getting left because you're taking everybody. You're supposed to gather. Y'all see what I'm saying? Listen for the, the sound. When God heard the sound of the trumpet, he would not only fight, but he would also deliver Israel out of the end of the end. And we see that in the scripts. The sound will be a sound of victory for Israel, but destruction for the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we blow the show for it now, we are blowing it right now for judgment to warn the nation, yo, judgment coming. Y'all think they coming. Because we just read Joel 3 going praise and worship. We said record pit, say record pit. Payback. Y'all who should need payback for what happened to his people. Oh, you gotta pay back. If you go back to Joel chapter 2, right before you get Joel 3, they're blowing the trumpets and they're calling for a solid mass. Why? Because they can judge them this time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Numbers chapter 10, verse 9. If you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow 
and alarm with trumpets, and he shall be remembered before Yahweh Elohim, and he shall be saved from the enemies. Judges chapter 3, verse 27. I'm not trying to speed, but I'm trying to hurry up and stay within time. And it came to pass when he was once come that he blew the trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim. Right in the past, when he was coming, he blew the trumpet at the mount of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them, and he said to them, Follow after me, for Yahweh have delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And when they went down after him, and took the wars of Jordan to our Moab, and suffered out of the to pass over, and they slew Moab at the time, but 10,000 men, all lusty, and all men of value, and there escaped not again. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest four score years. So you notice in the beginning, they blew the trumpets. Judges chapter 7, this is Gideon. And he said unto them, Look on me. Do ye likewise? Now remember, just look back for those that don't know. I mean, we've seen the movie 300. Right? 300. No movie. Right? You know, this is all of you. know, you can't be done, right? <laughs> they got that from us, y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They got that from the Bible. That was the first 300, right? Now, 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 for those that don't know, Gideon started out with thousands of men. But the Most High, see, any time before the Most High does multiplication and addition, he always does division and subtraction first. Hallelujah. Right? That's called pruning. Say pruning. Pruning. So he will divide and subtract before he adds and multiplies, right? So it got it went from thousands of men down to 300 men. And I believe they was looking at Gideon like he's crazy. Gideon, you're supposed to be leading us. What are you doing? Guess what? I know some y'all look at me crazy sometimes. But you got to trust the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Gideon says, the Most High says, okay, those who put their face down in the morning, sit them on. Gideon, like, yo, that's what you're doing, my man. Sit them on, bro. He sends them home. He's only left with 300 men. They go out and they destroy thousands in the home. That's the first 300. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me keep reading. Do ye likewise and behold. When I come outside of the camp, this get you talking. It shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a what? Trumpet. Trumpet. Say trumpet. Trumpet. I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of the camp and say the sword of Yahuwah and Gideon. See, we got to put it in our mind to say the sword of Yahuwah and Houston Reaper. The sword of Yahuwah and Reaper of the Nation. The sword of Yahuwah and my family. The sword of Yahuwah. See, by doing that, Yahuwah Shabbat will come and fight for you. Hallelujah. So Gideon and a hundred men were with him, came onto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had newly set watch, and they blew the trumpets and bring the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and bring the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands, and the what? The trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried the sword of Yahuwah and of Gideon. And they stood, every man in this place, round about the camp, and all of the host ran, and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and Yahweh set every man's sword against his power, and threw out the logs, and the host fled from Bereshitha to Saratha, in the border of Abelio, until Tabai. To, to, to I'll kill them all, so let me keep riding. <laughs> so, Gideon and them start blowing the trumpets, it started to get confusion upon him. Hallelujah. And so much that they started to kill themselves. They started to kill each other. The most high caused confusion to come upon them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 31, verse 5 through 7. So they were delivered unto thousands of Israel, a thousand every tribe, twelve thousand 
armed with war. And Moses sent to them two more, thousands of every tribe, and Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war with holy instruments and trumpets to blow in the hand. And they warred against the Midianites, and Yahweh commanded Moses, and they slew all of the men. So this is a sign of war and of judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll be wrapping up. We've got two weeks. We've got one more after this. We'll be wrapping up. For final judgment in the second coming. Now, if you didn't hear our message last week, we just posted it up. I know well, the week before last, we just posted it up last night. We showed you how we should. Right? Because we... We got a lot of rules that's anti-Mashiach. And they think that it's some new knowledge. But they don't understand how deep of a hole they fall into. Right? See, all Hasatan does is present the same gift. He just wraps in a different wrap of it. That's the same thing he gave me. He said, yo, man, yeah. You'll be just like the Most High. You'll have knowledge. You'll go deep. And these brothers are going so deep, they don't drown. Hallelujah. Because they tread in shaky waters. See, this is, if you want to be honest, brothers and sisters only, they really are not study that. A lot of them know, you know, what they're talking about, but they don't. See, the way to stay in the general ignorance is by agreeing or disagreeing with something that you never study. That's the way you stay in the general ignorance. By agreeing or disagreeing with something that you never look into it for yourself. See, that's what we did in church. We just took what we said and ran with it and said, oh, that's the truth. No, you have to look into it for your self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So last time that we, we brought, we showed the Shiite, we proved it by the Dead Sea Scrolls. Hallelujah. Yeah. There ain't no manuscript over our that. Let's get into it. The sound of, the sound of judgment. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. The great day of Yahweh, Zephaniah, I'm sorry. The great Zephaniah, I'm sorry, I said Zephaniah. <laughs> Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 14 through 18. The great day of Yahweh was there. It is near and it hastened greatly. Even the voice of the day of Yahweh, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloomness. This don't sound like a holy happy day, right? No okay. day. A day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet, a day of trumpet and alarm against the big cities and against the high towers, and I will bring distress upon them, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against Yahweh, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as dust. That don't seem to happen to me. That's some serious, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before Yahweh, and to them were given seven trumpets. Say seven trumpets. Seven trumpets. And the seven angels which had seven trumpets prepared themselves to say sign. Sign. So each angel had a different sound. You gotta hear the sound as well. For the first angel sounded, and there followed hell, fire, mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burned up, and all of the green grass was burned up. And the second angel sounded, and it was a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of creatures which were in the sea and, and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. First Corinthians, we should be showing how the trumpet is a sign of judgment and of the second coming. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last what? Trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be rise, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
I did not talk about the rapture. There is no rapture. Okay. I, I, I posted that one time, dude, and my queen said, and you're going to be left right along with everybody else. I said, well, whoever that that come in the sky rapture you, I don't want to You go ahead and go with it. Matthew chapter 24, 30 through 31. And then it shall appear the sign of a son of man in heaven. And then it shall all of the Tribe. church. Pentecostals. Baptists. Tribe. Say tribe. Tribes of the earth born, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and shall send the angels with a great what? Sound. Say sound. With a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Hallelujah. Listening for the sounds of the trumpets. We're going to close out. It is important for us to listen and hear the sound of God's voice in these last days. How many people in here, have, in, well, I won't put you on the spot. How many people have heard God speak before? Okay. Now, one way, and this, this should help you, I would just encourage you. One way I discern the most I voice is from my voice, because you know that's that's where the biggest issue is. It's like my voice or the most high voice. Like, which one? I know this when I'm talking to myself, like I won't call myself you. I'll say I. Like if I put this down, say, man, I need to go pick that up. I need to know it's a bit. Oh man, I forgot this. I forgot that. I know it's when the most I speak to me, he calls me my name when he says you. See, because I never call myself you. Say, hey, man, you need to. Now you may say it in the most I, but I believe it's the most I speak to you when that man stops me. I heard a lot of people, I would speak to people. I heard a story with a man walking to me in the middle of New York. I don't know the man, didn't know this man. He spoke the exact same day. He just left me and tell me his name. Spoke. So I heard the most I speak in many ways. But the most I, many times, when it's concerned from your voice and his voice, he will call you you. He won't say, I need to go pick up HS. You need to go pick that up. You need to go apologize. You need to get that fixed. You need to let this go. Just, you need to. Now, here's the big thing. Now that you're separated from his voice and your voice, now you've got to decide, is this how it's time or is this the most time? And that's where the world, say the world. Word. The world comes in place. When you discern, okay, does this voice line up with what the world is saying? Because if it doesn't, there's a hundred percent change, that ain't the most time. Hallelujah. See, how's the time going to take you to obey the Bible? You know that? And the most high will never tell you to disobey the Bible. So you can get that very simple. But when you speak to the most high, he'll give you three answers. Yes, no, or wait. Not right now. And some of us, see now you can't go with your own agenda in, in the prayer books. Okay, most high, I want, I want this house. So I'm going to fast and tell the most high what you're going to do. I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray, because I want this house. Now let me tell you something, fasting don't get you nothing. Let me say it again. Fasting does not move the most high. God's messing my ear up. What? I've been fasting all week for a You ain't going to get it. You ain't going to fast. Fasting does not move the most high. So you think because you did something great, the most high is going to act? No. Your good deeds are like filthy rags. Do you know what filthy rags was in Hebrew culture? Literal rags. That's how the most high looks at your good deeds. That's your own person. You're supposed to do that. Uh -huh. Right? You want to swell. Oh, let me go back. Fasting does not move. Fasting is designed to kill 
the flesh. He did mess with all that, right? Listen. Listen. Now, now, I'm not saying you can't pray for anything by the fast. Yes, you can. You can't have all time move. Yes. But you don't fast to get something. You fast to hear the voice of the most high. So, see, I may want this house, but I'm not going on the fast to get the house. I'm going on the fast to hear the voice of the most high to know if I should get the house or if I shouldn't get it. Hallelujah. Oh, that just messed somebody up. I'm going to broke somebody fast now. <laughs> you can't fast when I'm in call. That's on the board. Three days. Three days, huh? You just gonna starve yourself. You know what you can fast and you can starve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But fasting does not move for those eyes. See, that's what Christianity yeah. told us. Hey, hey, if you want something for those eyes, go on a fast, hey, you cool. No. Now, for a spiritual matter, yes. You want to get delivered from anger? Fast. Say fast. You want to get to that? One more thing I fast when most of these angry. Y'all ready? Okay, we're going to wrap up. Listen, because I know we got to go. If you want to fix a dog, right? Say you got a dog. He's a mean as a rascal. He's biting in the air. Listen, you know how you fix that dog? You saw him. Say saw him. Now, I'm not saying kill them. Well, they ain't no rights, people. Don't walk out. Right? But you starve. I think it's the mother. Yes. Two weeks. Two weeks. You give them water, but you don't feed Because guess what? After a while, you don't recognize, oh, no. This is the hand that's feeding. I need to respect him more. I ain't going to eat. And guess what's going to happen to that dog? He ain't going to be right. He going to be so humble. You know why? Because he's going to be hungry as hell. Oh. He won't do whatever you say. Sit. He won't sit. Go look. He won't go look. And then when you feed him, he's going to recognize, okay, okay, this is it. That's where the whole concept comes from. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. So it's the same thing with your flesh. If you can't get anger under control, you know what you do? You starve his flesh. See, because you got to speak to your flesh. Say your flesh, boy, you better calm down, man. Because I know I ain't trying to take you there. Relax, bro. You know, nice, nice little female walking by. You just got to get healthy. You got to look. You need to go on the back. Say, say, you need to go on the back. Go on the Because your flesh is not responding to you. You, your flesh is supposed to be subject to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if your flesh is not listening, you tell your flesh, you need to go listen. Or I'm going to starve you. Because guess what? If you got a problem with anger, you won't eat for two days. Listen, somebody can cut you off. You ain't going to have to strike nobody out there. Okay. Somebody get a key to finger. Man, I ain't even got to that. Why? Because his flesh is dead. But the robot is strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to listen and hear God's voice in these last days. One way you hear it is by fasting. Say fasting. fasting. And we're going to be announcing our fast tomorrow. Oh, it's my oh, shit. Yes, we'll be going on a fast before she cold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to talk just the day of the tone. So we're going to be like, oh, yeah, we do. No, we're going to do two days before. Well, I'll let you know that. No. Right. So. He's running out. <laughs> what sound of the trumpet do you hear Yah sounding for you? Let that sit. Out of all the things we went through, what sound are you hearing in your life? Hmm? Is it a gathering sound? Is it the sound of God's voice telling you to get some things right, let some things go, forget it, cut this person off, you got to move on, you got to do What sound are you in? It's not enough just to hear God's voice, but what is he saying to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And once you hear what he's saying to you, are you acting in obedience to it? That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We coming up on the day of atonement. 
The feast of trumpets is designed to blow and remind the nations judgment is coming, also to remind Israel to prepare because the day of atonement is coming so you can get things right. Why? Because after the day of atonement, tabernacle will come where the most high comes and lives with his people. What sound of trumpet is he sounding for your family? After you get you right, now it's time to look at your family, your children. Have you spoke a word over your children's life? Or have you called them all type of negative names? You just like your dad. You just like your mom. You ain't gonna be nothing. The Bible says it's better for you to tie a milestone around your neck and toss yourself in the river if you hurt one of these little ones. Uh. Be mindful, Israel. Listen to the sound and the voice of the Most High. What he is saying about your family. What sound of trumpet is he sounding for the nation of Israel? One sound he sounded, he sounded us to prepare. Because guess what? We regularly, God. Spiritually, we're not ready. And some of us still can't even get along with one another. Huh? And I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, you better not get involved with nobody's foolishness. And I don't know who that's for. But do not get involved with people who, remember, Jonah got on the ship, headed in the wrong direction. The storm came, they didn't only affect Jonah, it affected everybody on that ship. And that ship could not be at peace until they did what? Drew Jonah off the ship. Because they came to the knowledge and said, oh, somebody over there fighting with the most high. Somebody fighting with the most high, but this ain't right. Uh, be mindful, do not get involved. Don't get involved in the gossip. Don't get involved in the foolishness. Separate your Sir, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be sure to listen for the sound of his voice. And make sure you have an ear to hear what is being shouted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who you say? Hallelujah. Everybody close your eyes. If you got children, you buy your children. As you sit here, I want you to listen for the voice of the Most High. He's going to speak to you. There don't have to be an audible voice. He'll speak right in your room. He'll deal with the things that you know you need to let go. You know you need to change. Find that secret place. Learn to find that secret place. Hide, no matter what's going on, or hide in the most high and listen for his voice. Because some people used to hear the voice of the most high, now they don't hear him anymore. The most high said, Because of your lack of time you've been spending with him, your loyalty has not been 100%. He said, He comes to meet with you at the meeting time, but you never did. It's time for some of us to listen and hear the voice of the Most High. What is he saying to me? Not what is he saying about this one, what is he saying about that one, what is the news saying, what's happening with the presidency, what's happening with this. What is he saying to you? Because if you do not hear the voice of the Most High, there's going to be some things that you have to deal with. You can't get ready. You got to be ready. So listen to the voice of the Most High. What is he saying to me? What do I need to let go? What do I need to change? Who do I need to stop hanging around? Who do I need to, what do I need to move around in my life? Listen. No, he's going to speak to you. Father God, right now I bind the spirit of confusion right now in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. I bind the spirit of trying to confuse the voices in Israel's minds. I pray that they hear your voice clearly. You speak 
through their heart right now in the name of you, child Jesus. Reveal to them the things that they need to change. What you need to show them, most high. The time is late, it's serious. It's important for us to hear the voice of the most high in these times. Father, I lead God over their mind. I do, we dress ourselves with the armor of Yah, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword, the breastplate of righteousness, the loins of truth, the shoes of shalom. And we pray that you lead us as our lieutenant and general in the spiritual warfare. Help your voice to be crystal clear. And not just for the here tonight, but from this night on. Clear, clear, Mosai. Bible says that Yah inhabits the praises of his people. So whenever he is lifted up, he will come in and inhabit or live here. Some of us need to start setting the atmosphere in our homes, in our personal spaces. Because if the atmosphere is not right, Yah is not going to come and inhabit. He's not going to come and live. You will say, okay, God knows my heart. He does. He knows it's wicked. Set the atmosphere. It's just like the most high inhabits the praises of his people. Our society inhabits the praises of his people too. So depending on the atmosphere that you set will determine what's going to grow in your life. You can't plant good seeds and expect it to grow in a bad atmosphere. You have to set the atmosphere right. 